two sessions in about one hour. CPT is on the uh, two sessions on the go. We are inviting delegates to the two sessions to our mobile studio. Today we are lucky to have CPT system member Starry. Hi. Starry uh, Lee Wai King. Uh, who is also hi, hi, nice to meet you. Hi. Who is also a member of Hong Kong's Legislative Council. We also have another guest, NTC Deputy Martin, Hello. Mr. Hi. Mr. Martin Liao Tang Jiang. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you today. Uh, it's very chilly now, so we're gonna get on to our bus studio now. Mm -hmm. Please, this way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as we gonna get on to our bus studio, we're gonna begin our interview of these two guests. Thank you for being in our studio is a little bit chilly today and uh, we know that uh, there are going to be two important reports this afternoon so yes. uh, my first question is for Martin you have been a member for 11 years yes. so you're listening to this kind of reports almost every year what are the figures you're going to pay special attention to? Yes, well I do not uh, pay particular attention to any specific set of data uh -huh. I do I tend to look at uh, the overall reports, words and statistics in order to assess the reports and to come to my own conclusion. Mm -hmm. But if you ask, you know, uh, since you've asked the question, you know, mm -hmm. there is one aspect which I tend to pay particular attention to would be the, uh, the, uh, the tremendous increase of cases in recent years, court cases and the allocation of human resources to the courts uh, is, prob is probably not very sufficient to handle uh, the situation. So uh, I was, I have been hoping that there would be a more allocation of resources to the courts you know, to handle cases a lot more efficiently because if you don't have enough judges dealing with the increased volume of cases, and the quality of justice must suffer. So that would be my observation. Thank you. Okay. Starry, then you are beginning your first year as a CPPCC member. What are your expectations from the report? My expectation will be that I'm looking for the detail of the judicial re reform because we all know that uh, our, our, our clear and um, uh, judicial system is very important. Uh, to the people the, of the whole China, uh, Hong Kong people as well, we are looking for the uh, judicial reform because um, in the past there are a lot of uh, people, uh, well of course in Hong Kong do not quite understand how it works in China, especially for the judicial system. Uh, in recent years, and, uh, the government put a lot more emphasis to the rules of laws and, 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 and all these uh, reform procedures. Uh, therefore, I'm looking forward for that. Okay, as we are doing this live stream on various social platforms, uh, we're going to say hi to our live. Uh, this mobile studio, we're just driving on the town, uh, the town Avenue as we're taking you, guys, uh, taking you to the Great Hall of People to attend the plenary session later. And I want to introduce our guests again. Uh, because we have more information and more titles of them because they are so important. Martin Liao Changjiang, Mr. Liao, is also a non-official member of Hong Kong's Exec Executive Council and uh, he is also a member of the Legislative Council and a barrister. And Starry Lee Wai King, Ms. Lee, is also the chairperson of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong. Am I making that correct? Yes, yes, and totally you're correct. Also a member of Hong Kong's Legislative Council. You're beginning your first year as a CPPCC member. Uh, as we were discussing about the content of um, the uh, two reports, one of them might be the anti-corruption campaign. You know, the China's anti-corruption campaign began in 2012, very sweeping one. And uh, Martin, how, have you noticed any achievements that impressed you most over the past years? Yes, I think uh, the anti-corruption yeah. effort has come a long way uh, since uh, 2012. Uh, there are two features which impress me most. The first one is that it is a sustained effort. So I think in the in my own experience, you know, past governments, you know, they will have the this anti-corruption campaign in the first couple of years mm -hmm. of each term of government, and it's 
kind of fizzled out. Um, but you know, it is a sustained effort now. I mean, we're now in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, has been ongoing for six years. Uh, it sends a very clear message that uh, to the entire nation that we want a clean country. Mm -hmm. um, the other aspect is that uh, it, my own impression was that uh, the, the anti-corruption efforts tend to stop at a certain level uh -huh. of government officials in the past. But now it seems that there, that there is no limit to uh, you know uh, you know uh, everybody is equal. Mm -hmm. So that two fe these two features impress me immensely. Mm -hmm. Starry, um, we know that Hong Kong is one of the world's cleanest places in the world when it related to governance. Mm. So can you tell us about Hong Kong, how Hong Kong has been fighting corruption? Uh, well, we have a ICAC department. Uh, that is very important. It is uh, uh, a department that is uh, to do the anti-corruption uh, things. Mm -hmm. Well, from receiving campaign to investigation to to prosecution. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that 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 ICAC handled uh, independently. It directly report to the chief executive and uh, okay. and uh, and I think after uh, like. Now it's 40 years of, nearly 40 years now of uh, operation. Now we have a light to the studio. Uh, rule of law and judicial reform. And just now we have been talking about the anti-corruption campaign both on the mainland and in Hong Kong. Mm. And we're going to talk about more about the, uh, the judicial reform. Martin, um, somebody says that uh, China, not, not, China is uh, increasing its judicial transparency these years. And According to your observation, how far are we from an ideal status? Well, there is no ideal status. Uh -huh. uh, if you're referring by judicial transparency, if you're referring to open court hearings, mm -hmm. that, then that is something to be encouraged. Okay, that's mm. a very brief answer. And the story, uh, what are the major achievements you have observed in this kind of judicial reform you have uh, mentioned just now? Well, um, well, I think um, the, the most impressive things to me, uh, again, just like Martin sh sharing, is the anti-corruption things uh, that has mm -hmm. been happening over the past, uh, especially the past four years and five years. I think this also impressed uh, the Hong Kong society as well. Uh, and uh, it, it delivered a very clear message that uh, the inter-nation the, the, I mean, the China want a very uh, clean society, but of course I know it takes time and it need more uh, establishment or it, it need more reform procedures to reach that objective. Okay. Well, I, I, if I may supplement, I think it is not, uh, I don't think you can stamp out corruption mm. entirely. I mean, no, no country in the world can. I think it is the extent rather than the existence of mm -hmm. corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where people, and now I think the country is making a lot of effort mm -hmm. in keeping uh, corruption under some, you know, kind of control, some, mm -hmm. you know, in some semblance of order, so to speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Pando. I just want to mention that Martin is also a barrister, and Sterry is the chairperson of Hong Kong's Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong. So we're now taking these two guests to the Great Hall of People for the plenary session to listen to the reports. So CGTN on the go. We'll keep going. And back to you stu in the studio, Pando. Thank you very much, very much, Guo and deputies. Now, if you want to see more of that CGTN on the go, just to follow us on our social media platforms in our special segment called... Okay. okay, let's keep talking. And as we keep going to the Root Hollow people, uh, let's see, can we make it...
same time? Yes, yes, we can. It's only five, uh, five past two. So where we stopped just now? Uh, about anti-corruption, there is a new supervisory commission being discussed that's going to be set up across the country. So, Martin, do you think this kind of uh, organ can help in the anti-corruption campaign and in what aspects, especially when it relates to, to the judicial procedures? Yes, I think uh, it is uh, natural progress because I think anti-corruption effort used to be handled by well, at least I know that two organs handle this. One is the SPP, mm -hmm. and the other is the uh, the CCP's uh, Internal Disciplines mm -hmm. Committee. Mm -hmm. Now, I think uh, the uh, the the present reform of that is that you know it will take it was the major efforts that we hear in Hong Kong is that you know is the uh, efforts of the uh, the CCP internal committee the internal discipline committee mm -hmm. and now you know it is uh, it's a natural because it only the I think the jurisdiction of the internal discipline committee is only confined to CCP members mm -hmm. and uh, now nowadays I think there are more and more uh, public officials who are not uh, CCP members and therefore I think it's a natural extension to have this uh, supervisory commi commission to to cover comprehensively all the public officials. Our live stream is about to uh, come to an end. If we want to have a very short uh, short summary for the cooperation between mainland Hong Kong's cooperation and upholding the rule of law, what would you say? Well, I hope more uh, uh, more sharing between Hong Kong and also the mainland relevant government official because I think uh, it can help. Okay, Martin, what would you say on that cooperation? Three words, communication, exchange and understanding. Mm. Okay, very brief. Mm. Hey audience, uh, from our various social platforms, we've been doing this live stream as we're inviting NPC deputy Martin and CPC member Stary Lee, they're all from Hong Kong and we're uh, going to the Great Hall of People, we're actually getting close to it and these two guests are going to attend the plenary session of China's two sessions, going to happen in about half an hour. So that's about to the end of our live stream today. We hope you enjoy it. We're talking about China's judicial reform and the rule of law. And more discussions going to happen on CGTN this afternoon. Let's say goodbye to our audience. Bye.